In this tutorial, we're going to take our animation from this simple artwork to this awesome retro video game look. So in After Effects, I've imported uh, my Illustrator artwork, and I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to follow along. The first thing I'm going to do is animate my text here. So I'm going to select my text layer. It's all nice and neatly named. Uh, and I'm going to press P on my keyboard to bring up the position. And I'm just going to create a keyframe. I'm going to drag this over to around one second. And then I'm just going to animate the Y position down on my first frame. So we get a nice animation there. Now I'm going to easy ease both of these by selecting them and pressing F9 on my keyboard. Hop into the graph editor by pressing this button here. And we're just going to add some custom easing to this animation and smooth it out. Now, I don't actually like this text appearing straight away, so I'm just going to delay that a little bit. And I'm just going to hold Alt and then press page down four times just so we have a little bit of delay before that text comes on. And by holding Alt and pressing page down, it will move our uh, layer uh, one frame at a time. I want this text to come on separately line by line, so I'm going to mask both of these out. So first, I will select the rectangle tool at the top here, and then I'm just going to draw a rectangle over the first line of text. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer, press M on my keyboard to bring up the mask settings, and then change this to subtract. And now we have the exact same thing. So I'm just going to delay this second layer by holding Alt and pressing page down another two times. So we'll have a slight delay on that animation, and I might actually increase that to four. So I'll hold Alt and page down twice once more. And then we get that animation there. So I want to add that retro looking flashy text that was always on the old arcade games. And I referenced Metal Slug to achieve this effect. So what we're going to do is press T on our keyboard to bring up opacity. And I'm going to do this for both my layers. And I'm just going to create a keyframe on both of them. Now I want to move ahead one frame. And I'm just going to set that to zero. And then we're going to move ahead eight frames. And this is why I counted on the actual Metal Slug animation. So I'm going to press Control and my right arrow eight times. Then I'm going to set the opacity back to 100. Then I'm going to move forward a whole second and set the opacity at 100 again. And this is because we're going to loop the animation. Now I'm going to select all of these keyframes, right click and go to Toggle Hold Keyframe. And now at the minute you'll see we kind of get that flash. But we want this to repeat. I'm going to add the loop out expression to this by alt clicking my stopwatch on the opacity layer and I'm just going to type in loop out and you can just go down your menu layer there and press enter and you don't actually need anything in the parentheses at all for this. Uh, I just want a standard loop out and I'm going to apply that to both my layers Then I'm just going to select both my layers and press U on my keyboard to bring up all active keyframes and I quite like where that opacity is actually sitting so I'm going to leave it where it is. Now if we hit play we have this flashing text, which will repeat itself and look pretty cool. Now it's time to get that pixelated look on our assets. As you can see, some of the trees and clouds here are a bit rounded, and we want it more square like this font I've used. So we're going to add something called CC Block Load. So I'm using FX Console to bring the effects menu up. If not, you can go up to your effects and presets in the right here. And I'm just going to type in CC Block Load. Now we could use the mosaic effect here, but it does require a little more setup and this just saves us using expressions to do that. So we can just alter the completion on this and you'll notice on the clouds, we can get a super easy pixelated look. This will all come down to personal preference and you want to do this for each layer as well, as each layer is going to be slightly different. So I'm gonna copy this block load effect and I'm just going to paste that to my other layers and then tweak it individually. Now you'll notice why we have to do it individually is, for instance, these flowers need a bit more resolution. So we need to slightly increase that completion there. Now, of course, you could link this up to sliders and expressions. But for the sake of how little layers we have, I'm just going to do this manually. Next, to really give us a low quality look, I'm going to change this sampling method here. And normally in After Effects, you'll see it like this but we want it to reduce its quality. So I'm actually going to press that twice and you'll notice we get the three dots in a line and that will actually change the sampling method to give us a slightly rougher edge. It's very minimal, but it does make a difference. Now we want to select all of our layers and press Control, Shift and C to pre-compose this. And I'll just call this one Game Over. And now it's time for the fun stuff. So we need to give it that retro glowy blurry look. And to do this, I'm going to start with a Gaussian blur on this layer. And I'm just going to set that to something small, maybe around three, just to give us a little less sharpness. Perhaps we could even increase it to five. And then I'm going to add a glow to this layer as well. And obviously that's way too bright. 
So we can increase the threshold and definitely turn down the intensity too. Maybe set that to 0.2. And perhaps I'll increase the threshold more to about 90. And you can see it gives us a slightly different look. And they're going to dupe this blur once more. And this time increase the glow radius to maybe around 40. And just change the intensity to 0.1. And it'll just soften out the edge a little more. Now I want to duplicate this layer and delete these effects off. And this time we're going to add a reptile just so we get a repeated edge. And I'm just going to expand all of these to 200. And this is just for a step later on. And then we're going to add an effect called CC Ball Action. And this gives us a really cool gridded look. Uh, kind of like an old retro screen or arcade machine. I'm just going to change the grid spacing to 1. And then the ball size to 95. And it's super, super small now. And obviously feel free to change this to taste. But I really like how this looks. I want to add an adjustment layer at the top of our comp. And I'm just going to call this Stylize. The first thing I want to add to this adjustment layer is Quick Chromatic Aberration. This is a free plugin from Plugin Everything. And I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to check it out. Just going to alter the position on the transform to 1. And the scale to 101. And this just adds the sort of distorted green, red, and blue channels around the edge. I then want to add a wave warp effect to this layer. And this is a cool little tip I learned from Ben Marriott. So we're going to set this to a height of 8. And then we're going to change its wave width. And I've set mine a little higher than Ben does, but we're going to go for 1200. And we're going to change the direction to minus 180. Then we need to change the wave type to square. And this gives us that distorted TV look. But it's super fast right now. So I'm just going to change the wave speed in our wave warp to 0.5. Now you notice we're getting these alpha edges. And unfortunately, Repetile doesn't seem to fix this. So we're going to fix this a little later on. Now we really want to crush these colors we've got going on. As we've still got some smooth gradients within our layers. So to fix this, we're going to add a posterize effect. And this will just limit the number of colors we can have. Of course, you can change to personal preference to this. But the color I went with was 10. And that just gives us a more defined color between each space. and gives us that banding look that we actually kind of want. I then want to add a posterized time to this. And I'm going to set that to 12 or 12 and a half if you're working at 25 FPS, just like I am. I'm also going to add some grain to this. So let's just add a grain with add grain. Change this from preview to final output. And I think that's a little strong. So we'll just reduce the intensity down to 0.5. And perhaps the size down to 0.5 as well. Then we want to add a transform at the end of this stylize. And we can just scale this up to 101 to cut off those banded edges. Now a super important step I actually forgot is we need to change our comp. Our second comp with a CC ball action. And reduce its opacity to 50. Just so our glows and original layer come back through. And you'll notice it changes the effect a ton by having that extra layer on. And also just double check that your pre-comps are also set to the undersampling method so we get that more distorted look. And now we have this cool distorted arcadey look to our animation. Now feel free to play with all of these settings and really make it your own. I'd love to see what you come up with on Instagram, so feel free to tag me. And if you want to learn some more awesome effects in After Effects, you can watch this video next.